Welcome back to the Shop Mini RC, everybody. I'm Ken, and today we are taking a look at this. We got it off Amazon, and uh, they also are on AliExpress, and I saw a lot of questions about it, so I figured we should show it. Boom. Ha, look at this guy. Nice. So this is like all aluminum. We've got some shocks on there. Here's the front. Let's open this guy up. Got the hitch. Nice. All the screws. Our Allen wrench. Looks like it's fitting both screw sizes, the countersunks, and the button heads. Nice, nice, nice. I assume this guy just kind of goes in here like so. And this is a heavy duty, guys. I'll weigh it here in a second. Oh, maybe it goes in this way. Maybe? Hmm. Maybe it goes this way? No. I'm confused. Oh, it does go this way. There's little chamfers in it. See that? So it goes like so. Boom. And this uses the countersunk screws. That's super nice. So our local guys have been doing kind of these trailer comps. And so having a trailer that has suspension on it, I don't know. Maybe it'll help. Also, the fact that it's nice and flat through here, there's no axle means you're not going to be hitting on a bunch of rocks or dragging on the rocks, which is going to be super beneficial. I kind of worry about the weight um, just from a comp standpoint. Pulling a little bit heavier trailer, maybe not the best, but I don't know. It looks good and it is quality for sure. Like I said, it's all aluminum. It just, it feels substantial. You hear that? I wonder if it's a little bouncy. We might have to get some oil fields. <laughs> okay, it is kind of... Maybe we need to adjust it. We are hitting right here just a little bit. So I don't really know what's going on there. Compared to this side. Oh, this side does a little bit too, I guess. Just not as much. I think the screws are just a little loose. That might be part of it. Oh yeah, that one's definitely loose. What about this side? So definitely go through and check your screws. Oh wait, it's got to be a little loose because it needs to pivot. Looks like it uses standard hexes in there. Do you see that? We might just have to uh, bend this just a little bit, just a tad. Oh yeah, I barely even, okay, yeah, much better. Let's see, we can back this guy back up. We might want to go through and lock tight in here. Oh, much more smooth. Just takes a little bit of uh, tweaking here, looks like. And get it a lot more smooth. Yeah, we're going to want to Loctite these screws for sure. They come a little loose from the factory. Probably just because they need it to be free, but you don't want them backing out either. So that's awesome. You can compare that to the, uh, the Traxxas trailer here, which I don't know why they made the neck so long on this guy. I would have rather had more space. I kind of wish this guy was a little larger. Let's get our scale accessories out. All right, so if you compare them, they are very much the same size. Okay. But again, this guy has got full suspension. It's full metal, uh, except these fenders. The fenders are plastic. Tires seem decent. It's got uh, 20.4 by 55.5s, 1.0s, obviously. Let's 
Seems okay. They're plastic wheels, but they look like they're true bead locks. You can see the screws in there, probably pinch it together. They're definitely a bigger tire than the Traxxas. So the trailer sits just a tad higher. Not a ton, but just a tad. See that? A couple millimeters. Actually, we can measure real quick. Let's see. So Traxxas sits right at 64 millimeters. And the Globact, that's who this is. Sorry, we never even mentioned Globact. They are a little taller. Right at like 77, it looks like. Yeah, 77, uncompressed. If you compress it, it's going to get a lot lower, obviously. It'll be like 62, 61 compressed. Let's go ahead and get the rest of this guy on here. All right. Looks like our trailer hitch is going to be a much more substantial ball than the Traxxas. So you can't use the same ball um, so that's unfortunate. The hitch is also looking a little bit larger. So it's definitely for the 118th scale, like the Traxxas or even the FCX 24 uh, larger bodies. It'll look a lot better with those than a smaller 20 actual 24th scale or even 20th scale. Curious what these extra screws are for maybe they're just extras they look like they probably are just extras in case any of these back out which is nice because like i said they do come a little little loose they could be a little tighter but then it starts to bind up so when you get it pull them out and lock tight them put them back in and make sure you're nice and free that's fun Let's see this uh hitch here oh yeah it snaps in nice Nice and free. All right, let's weigh this guy. All right, we're all zeroed out. Oh, too heavy for our little little scale. So this guy's at 252 grams. 252 compared to 96. So just know, again, you're getting something definitely more substantial. I don't know if this guy's going to work... With our comp stuff it's like the weight half the weight of the truck so it's almost adding 30 30 percent more weight to the truck but um yeah i don't know again i don't know if the shocks will help it's just cool the shocks are cool right like they just look cool um definitely when you're scale trailing the little bounce from the trailer might be kind of fun or just watching it kind of articulate i think that could be really cool Overall, though, seems like really quality, like I said. Um, my only concern is the design of this here because there's no actual axle, right? Like the fact that it was hitting a little bit and we could easily just kind of pull or, I don't know, bend bend this back just a little just to make more clearance makes me worry that uh, it could end up bending at some point, maybe? I don't know. You're not really going too crazy with these. Maybe if you were crawling and it got bound up and you, you were like pushing real hard on the axles because these axles are not the most substantial there. And again, they're independent, which is cool, but again, I don't know how, how that would hold up to some real beating. That clicking noise is when this uh, lever goes back into the brass bushing. It's almost like you could take just a little bit off right here and it would be a little more chamfered and it would slide in a little bit easier. I bet over time that's going to actually just smooth out a lot. And it also has to do if you're putting pressure on it, like lateral pressure, right? 
if I'm pushing in on it hard and it does catch a little bit or pulling out. But under normal articulation, it's not too bad. I kind of wish the price was a little lower on these guys, but overall, I get it. Again, it's all aluminum. I think you can pick them up on AliExpress significantly cheaper than Amazon, but that just has to do with shipping and shipping times and stuff like that. Again, I just wanted to show you guys, like I said, I'd seen a lot of people kind of asking about them or wondering why they were the price they were. And I think it has a lot to do with just being like this real nice metal uh, milling. And it's, I mean, again, it's super nice. I'm not And I think that, uh, like I said, the. And again, I think the only real weak point might be right here, but it's a pretty cool design. Worst case, somebody could all you know what they could do is just actually put a shaft here, but then you're not going to really have a total independent, and that shaft will be bending it. I don't know, maybe not. Wouldn't be the worst though, because that a shaft going through here and it would still compress pretty far. It would compress as far as you really need it to, right? You'd only lose like two millimeters, maybe three of travel. And you don't need a ton of travel on a trailer, right? So just a solid single shaft, basically this size. Connect them together. That'd be the only thing I would change if I was to redesign this thing and maybe chamfer the inside of here so that when it's compressing, it doesn't kind of catch. Other than that though, guys, pretty cool trailer for sure. And um, yeah, we're gonna have some fun with it. So we went and pulled this guy apart a little bit and I wanted to show that there is a bearing in there. It's not just running uh, on the aluminum arm, it's actually got a bearing. So that's super nice. And um, this hardware is not back up for this because these are much longer screws or bolts. Uh, these are for the hitch, right? They're going to be for the hitch. So while we got this guy apart, I think I'm going to... I'm going to go ahead and Loctite it. And I'm going to just chamfer this down just a little bit so that it slides into this space here. It's just like a bushing and a washer, right? Or you could find a very small washer to help kind of give this a little bit more space, right? So it was spaced out just a little bit more. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll see if we can find a very small, it's gotta be the same diameter as the bushing is the only thing. Um, because if it's not, hmm, that might be hard. We'll look. If not, then we'll just dremel this down just a little bit. Right here, you can already see where it's kind of rubbing just a little, and that'll help smooth that out quite a bit when it pushes up into the, the space there. All right, you can hopefully see there that we're just ever so slightly chamfered now. And that should really help it just kind of slide back in to that little, little bushing. Should be nice. Remember when you're applying Loctite, don't apply it to anything plastic because Loctite destroys plastic. And uh, yeah, just, you don't need to use a lot. What's nice about Loctite is you don't have to over tighten or super tighten anything you're uh, putting it on because the Loctite will hold it. Oh yeah, much better. Just that little tiny bit. That should help a lot. Let's get the other side on and then we'll do this, this side over here. And just to compare, this is the side we chamfered and we've Loctited and we've basically tightened them down and backed them off just enough so that it's nice and loose and it's not grabbing. Super smooth, right? And this is the side that we have not done. And you can see it kind of just, it's grabbing a little, a little rough. Again, it doesn't grab if, you, if you're pushing on it just the right way, but we're gonna go ahead and chamfer that one too. And if you don't want to Dremel anything, and you're, you know, or you don't have a Dremel, you can just back this screw off right here, right? So if you have it too tight, it's definitely gonna grab, okay? But if you back it off, 
it grabs less. And if you back it off more, it doesn't really grab much at all. Okay, but the problem is then it could potentially back out. So we're doing a combination of chamfering it a little so that it slides back in there nicely and then also lock tightening it. But if you do back it out uh, and you don't chamfer it, let's go a little more. You're definitely going to want to lock tight it because otherwise it'll back all the way out. Yeah, I think you can kind of see the washer bouncing up and down on there as well. See that? Yeah, just chamfering this edge is going to help a lot. Again, you already see it here. It doesn't do it at all. So, get this done and then we're done. Oh, yeah. Look at that, nice and smooth on both sides. Much, much better. I highly recommend doing that little modification there. Again, we just, you can see, we just barely dremeled out a little chamfer just so it wasn't hooking. And over time, it might work itself uh, kind of a groove there and then it won't be so clicky, I guess. But yeah, yeah, sweet. Then it uses a uh, four millimeter for the wheel nut. Here's the brass hexes on there. There's a brass hex in there, pretty cool. Your axle shaft is on a bearing. And uh, it's held in by a C-clip right here. And then your axle pin right there. I kind of wish they would have supported this a little more. This piece of metal was able to support this a little bit better. Um, just because again, I feel like this portion right here is kind of the weak spot and it needs to be not the weak spot. And I don't think it's overly weak. I'm not saying it's weak at all. Um, I just think that compared to the rest, this is like super quality. And this part is the part that worries me. Again, not a huge worry, unless you're trying to carry a thousand pound something in there, you know, like I don't think there's an issue. Um, but if anything is going to have an issue, it's probably going to be right there.
make sure you guys like, subscribe, share, hit that notification bell, do all those things you do at the end of videos you like. And um, yeah, keep an eye out for uh, future videos. And why don't you comment down below, um, <laughs> cantilever trailer. Put cantilever trailer down in the comments below if you watch the whole video. All right, everybody, get out there and build something awesome, whether you're building an awesome car or a course to run it on or a community to hang out with. Get out there and build something and then smash it, crush it, bash it, but don't break the expensive parts.